Hi, Adam. Hi, Jane. Thanks for joining us on Voices in Transformation. I appreciate you being here. So I'm going to jump straight in and I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to start with you, Adam. Uh, I want to hear more about the digital transformation that's been underway at Unilever for some time now. Can you maybe share some stuff with us about what's been going on there? Yeah, sure. I, Unilever has identified that digital is a big opportunity for our business You know, several years ago. Uh, so for example, four or five years ago, we decided that we were going to really embrace the cloud and we moved 100% into the cloud. We don't own any data centers anymore. Uh, and what that does is gives us a base where we can get at the innovation and we can try things, you know, repeatedly without without it costing us too much. It gives us that flexibility, uh, and it underpins a digital transformation in so many areas, including AI. Well, that was going to be my next question because we hear a lot about AI. We hear a lot of conversations about the use of AI. But I, I guess what I'd like to find out is perhaps maybe what are some of the biggest investments that Unilever has made in tech and in AI? But more importantly, I guess, is what kind of impact are you seeing in your operations and the overall business performance? Yeah, so the, the best way to describe it, if, you, if you're looking at um, a digital factory, or, or moving towards a digital factory is the first thing you have to do is you have to get the data from the line. So you need to put the instruments on the line and then collect that data and make use of it. Once you have the data, you can see what the line's doing, what things trip it up, where the waste is. You can then take some of that data and put it into what we call the digital twin, where you can use uh, digital and AI to replicate what's going on and recommend efficient improvements. That gives you quite a big step up of inefficiency. Then you go up to the next level and you can hand over control of some of the inputs to an AI from that data. Now you start to get a situation where the computer is paying attention all the time and the efficiency really steps up. Well, that, that sounds quite a lot of like like a, a big a big jump really for the journey that you've been on. Um, I'm going to move to you, Jane, because. Uh, the technology is great and the innovation is great, but how do you actually take people with you on a journey like this? Well, so that's a, that's a great question, Berea. Um, so we aim to do it using the language of skills, uh, and we talk about current skills and future skills. Um, and for all of our functions, we have what we call skills hives, which very simply identifies the skills people need to do their jobs now the skills they maybe need to develop their career, and also the skills to say relevant for the future. So this really makes it very visible for people where they need to develop their skills such that they are still relevant in the future Unilever. And then as a learning team, we pick one of those future skills and, and we just drive it like mad. So five years ago, it was data science. In 2024, it was AI. And we provide everything from very broad training, which is probably more about um, more about awareness, all the way to quite in-depth hackathons where we give people a business problem, we give them mentoring and in-depth skills development such that they can then work as a team and develop a real business problem. So, so that's essentially the, the approach that we take. Um, and the tech itself, of course, is great because tech is allowing us to do things like automatically translate training into multiple languages. So the tech itself is also helping us in learning reach um, a very large number of people. I guess, well, having the, fo the focus on skill acquisition, what's been the impact on particularly tech and data? And what's that had on, on the company's capabilities, you know, if, on its innovation, on its performance? So, I mean, that comes down either to very sort of specific levels. So, for example, I talked about in 2024, um, we've been focusing very heavily on AI. And in all honesty, um, we've been looking at basics. So how do you use the basic tools for AI? And we, we reckon that we have, um, if people use tools properly in terms of personal productivity, such as speeding the time to read reports or re produce reports or analyze data, people can save about two hours a week. Um, and we trained sort of 23,000 people in that sort of technology last year. So, uh, you know, I guess we can do the maths in, in terms of that. Of course, sometimes we do very deep training, which allows people to do the sorts of projects that Adam's been talking about, 
Um, and obviously, they have huge impact in terms of things like efficiency, reduced waste, etc. And, and Adam, how are the employees adapting to this type of thing? I, I'd say actually, the the employees where we have the leadership and the excitement in the factory, we're we're seeing those bright spots where we've got real innovation going on. I mean, we have a spray drying tower in Brazil, in one of our plants in Brazil, where we've uh, we, we've gone through the process I talked about earlier. We've put the instrumentation on, and we've got to the point where we've handed over control of that process to an AI. Um, if I oversimplify, you, you spray detergent in at the top and hot air in at the bottom, and as it falls, it turns into uh, snow, which is your washing powder. Um, the um, uh, and that takes a lot of energy, and the AI paying attention on the energy, controlling the energy input continually took 25% of the energy out of the system, which gave us a you know much better green footprint. But it's really changed the game in that particular example. That's a great example. It's a good tangible example. Now, Jane, you said something earlier before about skill sets, and I want to go back to that point because um, clearly the skill sets that were needed to work in uh, supply chain and, and in Unilever perhaps were very different 10, 15 years ago. So I guess what are some of the new skill sets that you think are emerging or have emerged or maybe even the role requirements and transformational capabilities that have evolved now that we have tech and AI? Yeah. I think what we see in skills is we see that often these skills enter in quite a broad way um, and, and so have quite a broad heading. But then we very quickly get into the sort of components of those skill sets and the nuances. Uh, and that's what that can then make a difference in terms of an individual or a group of, of people's uh, impact on a business. So if we go back to talk about AI, um, which, which obviously is a, a very current um, focus for skills. I mean, in 2022, so only what sort of just over two years ago, AI wasn't even in our skills taxonomy in Unilever, and it, it wasn't in many even commercially available skills taxonomies. As I said, in 2024, we sort of trained over 23,000 people in AI but already in 2025, what we're finding is we start to need to go a level down. So this year, our big focus is on prompt engineering, um, which, of course, is, is a subset set of being able to use AI. I think the other thing that we see, and, and Adam alluded to this earlier, is real benefits come from merging skill sets. So the sweet spot is when you take somebody who has a good understanding of our business processes and you give them knowledge um, uh, around skills that can then improve the efficiency of our business processes. But the new skills merge as well, right? So, um, you know, data analytics, of course, is a big skill set. What we're finding now is that one of our focuses for this year is teaching people how to use AI to complete data analysis on on much of their data sets. So uh, I think that's how we we see um, skills move, but it, it's getting quicker and quicker, right? So, um, so yeah, it's about adapting. Important. Yeah, yeah it's about adapting, yeah. isn't it? And it, it sounds like you're all adapting pretty quickly, which is, I guess, the pace that you have to do that. Um, you know, this is a really exciting time to be in supply chain. And uh, I guess the question that I have for each of you uh, I'll start with you, Jane, and then I'll go back. We'll finish with you, Adam. But is is what excites you about supply chain in 2025 and beyond? And and so, I guess, well, hold on, I'm not even done. And what excites you about supply chain and being in Unilever uh, for 2025 and beyond? Yeah, so, uh, you know, in the role that I sit in, um, one of the things that really excites me about the technology and about focusing on skills in the way we talked about is it really helps us democratize um, job opportunities for people. Um, so, you know, we have examples of individuals who have started at a very humble, humble role in a factory and are now sitting in our data, uh, global data science teams and talking about skills and being able to provide uh, this training at scale really allows us to to give truly everybody those sorts of capabilities. And I think, you know, that that is one of the things that is at the core of Unilever, um, actually our social commitment to people in terms of being able to um, 
develop them for their future employment. So that, that really excites me. What about you, Adam? I think so. I, I feel very fortunate to work for Unilever as in the tech function because the top of the house really value digital. They see where it can play a you know a role and they know it's needed to, to drive benefits. And we've done the hard work to build the foundations with the cloud and some of the other things we've done in the last four years. So we are in a great position. We've got all of the stakeholders lined up. We've got the base infrastructure we need. Uh, and there's a real opportunity to make a huge difference to the efficiency of our supply chain. And there's all sorts of other spin-off benefits like sustainability and um, uh, I, I, that, that actually are genuinely exciting, you know. Uh, so, I, yeah, I think, and I've been in this industry long enough to remember when the, inter, when the internet became a business tool. This is easily as big as that in terms of the impact it's going to have. And talking technology would won't get, you know will only get us so far. We got to talk technology and people. Thank you both for being here and sharing your stories. And I look forward to hearing more about it later on. Thank you very much. Thank you.